Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. Now we have two equilateral triangles that intersect inside a unit square, and a circle with radius r is inscribed in the region shown. Find the radius of the circle. So as you can see here, we have some symmetry, right? If you turn this figure upside down, you're going to get the same thing. And we do have a circle basically in a rhombus, right? So we do have a rhombus in the middle that uh, is caused by the intersection of the two equilateral triangles. And we're going to find the radius of the circle. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, we're going to take advantage of uh, symmetry, obviously. And uh, in order to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical segment that passes through the center of the circle and also the vertices, one of the vertices of each triangle. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're going to start here. We're going to start here and then go all the way down. Okay, like this. And basically that segment is, is going to give us a lot of good information because notice that that goes through the center, that goes through the center of the square, so on and so forth. Basically splits it up into two mirror images, okay? Kind of like a y-axis, and our picture is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Okay, now, another thing that I'd like to do is also make a horizontal segment that goes through the center of the circle, so we can go like this. And notice that this actually splits the rhombus up into two pieces, right? And those pieces, if you look at those pieces, uh, they're, they're triangles. Uh, well, actually, you can talk about four pieces as well, four right triangles, so on and so forth. Okay, cool. So what do we know about those triangles? Well, first of all, start with the big equilateral triangle. So this is a 60-degree angle, and that's a 60-degree angle, right? And this is also a 60 degree angle. So it's going to split up into two 30s. This is 60, 30, 30. And this is 60 degrees. And that's 60 degrees. And that's a right angle. Cool. So we do have four 30, 60, 90 triangles. And all those segments basically form the uh, sides of the rhombus. And the circle is inscribed in, in the rhombus. Okay. And our goal is to find radius. But uh, so far, how do you find the radius, right? So I'm going to make another connection here. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the center of the circle to one of the points of tangency. Obviously, the radius is perpendicular to the tangent line at that point, right? We know that. So that makes another 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is kind of cool, right? Okay, nice. Now, these are all nice things, but how about lengths, right? I mean, we know the angles. How about lengths? Well, do we know the side length for the equilateral? That's a big question, right? If, because if we can find the side length for our equilateral triangle, I'm talking about the small one, by the way. Let me go ahead and shade one of them. So I'm talking about the side length of this one. If I can find the side length or something about that triangle, then I should be able to find R from here because uh, we have a lot of 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay, so that's the million dollar question then. What is the side length for the small equilateral triangle that I just shaded? Well, in order to be able to find that, we have to consider the unit square. So we do have, and obviously there's more than one way to go about it, but if you consider this square, which has side length one, uh, in other words, the height of the square, I guess you can say that, right? The height of the square is one, and the base is also one, so it's kind of like a rectangle with base and height one. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, this is the center at the midpoint, so, if you consider this point here, take a look at that. The height is one, and I can also find the height of the equilateral triangle, right? So my goal is basically to find this little piece here, that little piece I really need because I don't really know what it is, right? So to find that little piece, the length of that piece, I do need to use the height of the equilateral, but I can find it, why? Because this equilateral triangle also has side length one. Cool. Then from 30, 60, 90 triangle, this is going to be one half and one half. And then the height of the big equilateral triangle, there are two of them, is going to be square root of three over two. So if you call that H, if you call this H, 
then h is going to be h is going to be square root of 3 over 2 right okay nice so once i know the height of the big equilateral i can subtract it from 1 okay to find this little piece let's call that piece y okay if i'm trying to find y i need to subtract 1 minus so y is equal to 1 minus root 3 over 2 which i can write as 2 minus root 3 you know i don't like that 2 minus root 3 over 2. okay so that's that little piece and it makes sense because if you square root of 3 is about 1.7 if you subtract from 2 you're going to get something like 0 0.3 divided by 2 you're going to get 0 0.15 yeah it makes sense it's about 15 percent of the whole height okay so once i know that how is that going to help me well this is a midpoint right and if i can find the height of this smaller equilateral triangle which i can right how am i gonna find it well from one half because this is one half right this is one half half of the square again we're using symmetry here so if you subtract y from one half i will be finding the height of the smaller equilateral triangle okay what do you what should we call that let's call that x okay cool so how do you find x x is equal to one half minus y x is equal to one half minus y but what is y equal to y is equal to two minus root three over two great so they have a common denominator which is nice and if you do the math you're gonna get square root of three minus one over two i think we got this answer again in another problem when we were solving a problems like this anyways so now i know x which is the height of the smaller equilateral so how am i going to go from that length to the r right so if you consider this triangle now take a look at this right triangle that's a 30 60 90 triangle and the height happens to be the hypotenuse of that triangle so in this case i know that square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 is the height and that's the hypotenuse so we have this relationship between x and r since x is the hypotenuse and r is the shorter leg i can safely say that x is equal to 2r right x is equal to 2r make sense okay again r is the shorter leg in this shaded triangle x is the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is two times the shorter leg in a 30 60 90 triangle okay now i'm going to make that transition now since x is equal to 2r and i'm solving for r so it will make sense if i isolated r here divide both sides by 2 so r is equal to x over 2 from here x is square root of 3 minus 1 over 2 if you go ahead and subtract i mean what am i talking about subtract seriously no it's not subtract it is called divide okay so we're going to divide x by 2 and that's going to be how do you divide a fraction by 2 so we can talk about shortcuts here well if you have a fraction and you're trying to divide it by 2 it's basically equivalent to multiplying by one half so if you double the denominator you're basically dividing it by so if you have like three fourths what's half of three fourths three eighths easy right simple okay if you know the trick so r is going to be then square root of three minus one over four which is the radius of our circle the orange one in the middle okay doesn't that look like an orange no not really but it's just an orange circle okay cool so that brings us to the end of this video Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow with another problem, which is going to be awesome. And until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.